Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Marcus and today in this video I will share with you how to design and animate this kinetic typography using Adobe After Effects. So let's go. So let's start. Before animating in After Effects, we need to do some design work in Adobe Illustrator. So let's start by creating a new document. Let's give it a name. I will name mine Kinetic Type 29. And let's make it 1080 by 1080 pixels in RGB and press create. Excellent. So first, let's select the type tool and let's type a letter. I will use A, but you can use any letter you choose. Then let's scale our type and choose a nice typeface. In my case, I'll use the campaign font in black italic. Great. Next, let's right click on our letter and select create outlines. Now, let's return to the toolbar and select the line tool. And let's make a line taller than our letter. Let's make the stroke black and increase the stroke thickness to something like 10 pixels. Let's change the stroke cap to round. Then let's copy the stroke to the other side of the letter while holding the ALT key. Before we move on to the next step, let's give our letter a different color to contrast the strokes and letters. Now, let's select both strokes, go to the top menu, go to Object, Blend and click on Make. Now go back to the top menu, Object, Blend and this time select Blend Options. Here, change the spacing selection to specified steps and reduce the number of steps until we see the letter behind. Nice. Return to the top menu, go to Object, select Expand and press OK. Now let's right click over our expanded lines and select Ungroup them, so we can choose each one individually. Perfect. Now select everything and let's go to the toolbar and select the Shape Building tool. And while holding Alt, let's use this tool to delete the lines around the letter shape. After that, delete the letter shape when you finish, as we no longer need the reference. We are almost there. Now. Let's return to the toolbar and select the scissors tool. So while the tool is selected, hover over a line and click on it with the tool. If you move the line, you can see it has been split into two parts. We will do this in every line, so it's laborious work, but it is worth it for the effect we get from it. I will speed up the video, so you won't need to wait for me to finish. Nice. When you finish, let's go to the Layer tab, click on the little hamburger menu and select Release to Layer Sequence. Select all the new layers and move them out of Layer 1. And to keep the file clean, just delete Layer 1. Now we can save this file and import it to After Effects. In After Effects, double click over the Project tab to import the file. Let's select Import A's, Composition and Retain Layer Sizes on the Import Settings and press Open. Excellent. Now let's open the composition. The first thing we want to do here is to create a solid background. So let's right click over the layer stack, go to New, Solid, make it white and press OK. Now let's create a new null object. This will be the null that controls and guides our animation. We will also add a few sliders that set the settings for an expression we will write soon. Nice. Still, with our null selected, let's go to the top menu, choose Effects, go to Expression Controls and select Slider Control. And on the slider control effect, let's click Ctrl or Command D to make two new copies. So now we have three sliders, and let's give them names. The first one I will call the field of influence. The second one I'll call amplitude, and the third one I'll call it random seed. This will make more sense when we start writing our expression, which is next. But before we move to those steps, let's lock the effects tab so it's always visible and accessible so we can connect later to our expression. Nice. So, let's start writing some code. Select one layer, it can be random, it doesn't matter at this time, as all layers will soon share the same expression. Cool. So with one layer, press P to open the position property of the layer, and while holding the ALT key, click over the stopwatch to open the expression editor. And let's start. The first thing we need to do is to connect to the controller layer. So let's write var control null equals sign, and using the pick whip tool, let's select our control null. The next thing we need to get is the position of the null. So let's write var control pose equals sign control null period position semicolon. Now let's start creating some variables to get the values from our slider on the null object. So let's write var random seed equals and using the pick whip tool connect this variable to the random seed slider. Now a new variable for the field of influence. So let's write var influence equals and use the pick whip tool to select the field of influence slider. And last but not least, let's create a variable to get the value of the amplitude slider. So let's write 
var amplitude equals, and the same thing again, using the pick whip tool, let's select the amplitude slider. Now we need to calculate the distance from our layer to the control null. So let's write var distance equals length, open parenthesis, position, comma, control pose, close parenthesis, semicolon. And as we have multiple layers and want them to move differently when we apply the expression, we will need to generate a random seed for the position. The easiest way to do that is to use the layer index. So let's write seed random, open parenthesis, index, plus random seed, comma, true, close parenthesis, semicolon. Now, we have the random position happening. Still, we need to calculate the random Y offset within the range specified by the amplitude slider. So let's write var Y offset equals random, open parenthesis, minus amplitude, comma, amplitude, close parenthesis, semicolon. Nice, we are making progress. Now we need to calculate the influence factor based on the distance of the null to the layer. So let's write var influence factor equals math, period, max, open parenthesis, zero, comma, math, period, min, open parenthesis, one, comma, open parenthesis, influence minus distance, close parenthesis, divide by influence, close parenthesis, close parenthesis, semicolon. Now, we need to smooth the position shift. That means when the null gets closer to the layer, making the layer move up or down, we want that movement to be soft and not a quick jump. So let's write var new y equals position open bracket one close bracket plus y offset times influence factor semicolon. Let's create a few more lines to finish this. Let's create a new pulse variable and assign an array with the original x and y positions. So let's write var new pose equals open bracket position open bracket zero close bracket comma new y close bracket semicolon. Finally, we return the new pose variable. So let's write new pose semicolon. And that's it on the expression side of things. I know this can be pretty daunting, so don't worry. I'll leave a link to this expression in the video description. Now, let's give some values to the sliders in our null control. Something like 200 on the field of influence, 500 on the amplitude, and 300 on the random seed. And if we move our null closer to the line, our line will move, randomly up or down. And that's what we wanted. So now, we need to apply this expression to all the other layers. Normally, you could click on the property and press Ctrl or Command C to copy the expression, and paste it on the other layers. But that doesn't work for the position. If you do that, you will be copying the position and the expression, and then both layers will be in the same place, and no one wants that. So, what's the solution when we have so many layers to apply this position expression? It's easy. We need to select the property with the expression. Then, let's go to the top menu, go to Animation, and select Save Animation Preset. Let's give it a name and press Save. Now, let's select all the other layers and return to the top menu. Animation. And if we go back to recent animation presets, we can find our freshly made one there. Just select it, and this will apply the expression without changing any layer position. And that's it, now the setup is ready to be animated. So, let's select our null, mark some keyframes, and then preview to see the result. Don't forget to play with the sliders to achieve different visuals. And that's it, it's ready to render and upload. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, remember to like and subscribe, and download the working file. And check my other kinetic type tutorials, I'm sure you're going to have great fun there. And if you want and can support this channel, you can buy me a coffee on my Buy Me A Coffee page, or become a member and get access to this tutorial working file, and many other working files and scripts in my page. And that's it, thank you so much for watching, have a great day, a great life, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye bye.